The Aztecs were known for their colorful regalia and beautiful pyramid temples. They were also known to be the most bloodthirsty tribes in the Americas. They sacrificed thousands a year to the gods, and you won't believe why. The Aztecs weren't the first people to practice human sacrifice, but were one of the most prolific. Archaeologists estimate that Aztecs sacrificed up to 20,000 people a year to their various gods. Many were men, and especially prisoners, but women and children were also sacrificed. Let us show you why the Aztecs thought the ritual of human sacrifice was so important and tell you some of the great links they went to in order to please their gods. It's all coming up next on Time Immemorial. It has been known for centuries that the Aztec tribe participated in ritualistic human sacrifice. Explorer Hernan Cortes first reported it in 1519. The details in his report horrified the public and laid the groundwork for conquest goals with the idea that the Aztecs were a horrible civilization that must be overcome. Even then, there was a political angle. Yes, it was true. Archaeologists found 603 human skulls in one Aztec temple, so they know there were likely thousands if you look at all the temples. The Aztecs weren't the only ones in North America that practiced ritualistic human sacrifice. The Mayans, those of Mesoamerica, and the Toltecs did as well. However, it was the Aztecs that most in modern society point to as the worst, possibly because of those adventure films that have the native pulling out a beating heart. Well, the ripping out of a beating heart did happen, but more on that in a moment. First, some background on the Aztecs. They lived in Mesoamerica and appeared to have peaked around the 13th century, between 1438 and 1521. Their capital city was in the same place as modern-day Mexico City. While the Aztecs were known for their blood rituals, they also had a role in a couple of modern-day things. First, they invented chocolate. Score a plus for that. Two, they were the first to celebrate what was called the Day of the Dead, which became Halloween. It's no wonder that Halloween and chocolate treats merged. The Aztecs were the dominant tribe in central Mexico until the Spanish conquered them in the 16th century. The Aztecs were nomadic but followed a strict calendar. They were incredibly ritualistic when they had their festivals, harvest, and all the rest. They believed if things weren't done in exact specific times, then the gods would be angry and cause all kinds of havoc from floods to droughts, disease, and war. The Aztecs also believe in what they called the Legend of the Five Sons. This legend states that these five gods sacrificed themselves so humanity could survive. The response was to continue in human sacrifice to help the gods protect humanity. They also believed the world headed to a new cycle every 52 years. That meant there was a possibility of worldwide destruction every 52 years. Aztecs thought they had to sacrifice in all the years before the end of the cycle to save humanity from destruction and to show the gods how grateful they were. As the sun would rise on the first day of the new 52-year cycle, there was a widespread celebration because the people thought they did their duty of sacrificing enough people. The Aztecs had an 18-month cycle in their calendar year. Each month was dedicated to a festival for a different god, with some gods honored in multiple festivals with other gods. Each of these festivals required human sacrifices to honor the gods. While there were multiple gods the Aztecs worshipped, we will look at five and how the sacrifices were conducted for those gods. Hold on, this can be disturbing. The god of war and the sun was Huitzilopochtli, and he was celebrated in four of the festivals. This is where modern filmmakers get the beating heart scene. This was held in daylight because this was a sun god. The sacrifice, usually a male captive, was covered in blue body paint and dressed in clothing representing the god. He was placed on a sacrificial stone with the priest then chanting before the priest took a knife and cut through the torso. The priest then ripped out the beating heart and held it to the sun. But that isn't all. 
The rest of the ritual is how the body was disposed of. The body was pushed off the pyramid and either cremated or, a more likely scenario, given to the warrior who captured him. The warrior would then send various body parts off to family, friends, and high-end acquaintances they wanted to impress. The parts would then be ritualistically eaten or displayed. Who wouldn't want a liver displayed in their home, right? The warrior then achieved a higher social status and could have more opportunities. Another important god was Tezcalipoca, the god of night, sorcery, and destiny. There were two ways to offer sacrifice to this god. One was to put the victim in a mortal combat situation with elite warriors. The victim got a fake weapon, but the warrior's weapons were real to ensure death. The second way was to choose a boy to mimic the god for a year. The boy would have to know how to play the flute and would perform in the streets for a year. During that time, he would be showered with money, luxurious items, and even women. He got anything he wanted, until the day he would be sacrificed. That day, there would be a feast in his honor. Afterward, the boy would be expected to climb the pyramid, break his flute, and surrender his body for the priest to kill. The next boy for this honor would be chosen immediately after the killing. Some honor, huh? Shutakutli, known as the god of fire and heat, was worshipped concurrently with another god, Weiweiteo, at the festival of Izkali. This ritualistic sacrifice involved some planning because it started ten days before the festival. They had to gather animals and some prisoners for the first night. Animals were sacrificed on the first night, with some captives burned next to them. However, they weren't just thrown onto the fire to die. No, they were allowed to burn until they were near death, and then the captives were pulled out of the fire. Was it some remorse on behalf of the Aztecs to do this? No, the captives were pulled out alive to have their hearts ripped out. Shutakutli was also worshipped solely at the end of the 52-year cycle. This was to make sure there were enough sacrifices given during the five decades before. In this ritual, the victim traveled with a priest to the rim of a volcano, and they would wait for Orion's belt to peak over the mountains. Then, the priest would rip out the heart of his live victim and light a fire in his chest in thankfulness to the gods. Other men would light torches from the fire and take them down to light the ceremonial lamps as well as the lamps in the city. Sounds like a bit of an excessive way to have light. Tlaloki was called the god of rain, water, and earthly fertility, and this is the god that demanded that children be sacrificed. The fear was that if they weren't, Tlaloki would ruin crops, cause droughts, and spread disease throughout the land. Those in charge of the ceremony would buy child victims from their mothers and would kill them monthly until the rains came heavily. The most horrific part of this ritual was that it required children's tears. That means the children underwent torture, fear, and other atrocities to make them cry. This was proven when the bones of 42 children found in one area showed signs of suffering torture before death. The fifth primary Aztec god was Xipototec, the god of rebirth, agriculture, seasons, and craftsmen. Victims for these sacrifices were handled similarly to the child allowed to mimic a god for a year. They were dressed, looked, and acted like the god Xipototec. Only it was for 40 days. The men were then taken to the temple where their skin was flayed while they were alive. Their skin was given to other warrior men to wear. These men would go through the city battling others and causing considerable trouble. The sacrificial victims were still alive. They had to be kept alive during the flaying so their hearts could be removed. Yes, removing hearts appears to be a big trend here. Their bodies were then eaten by others in ritualistic cannibalism.